inequality. The economic inequality. The inequality issues. The city's wealth gap. Is the most expensive city in the world. The least affordable housing market in the world. Is the most unaffordable city on the planet. No, Hong Kong is known for its towering skyscrapers, bustling streets, and vibrant culture. It is one of the world's most densely populated cities with over 7 million people in population. As the city has grown, so too has the demand for housing. Amidst this fast-paced metropolis, there's a hidden housing phenomenon that we might not be aware of. Cage homes. Cage homes. Cages. Cage homes. Cage homes. Cage homes. Cage homes. Cage homes. Coffin homes. Coffin cubicles in Hong Kong. Not for animals, but people. One of the most glaring manifestations of Hong Kong's inequality is these so-called cage homes. These are cramped living spaces, six feet long and four feet wide, similar area as a US-sized parking lot, often stacked on top of each other in rundown buildings. They're called caged homes because these residents are often separated by wire mesh. Many of these tenants are not invisible during the day because they power up this army of workers that keep Asia's financial hub buzzing. They clean the city's streets, sewers, unload and load merchandise, but are so poorly paid they cannot rent or buy a decent sized apartment. These four by six feet spaces are where the city's poor, downdrawn, neglected and disabled are crammed into night. More than 200,000 people live in these subdivided flats, which are a dainty euphemism for these inhumane living conditions. This problem is exaggerated by the fact that it takes an average of a family six years to be allocated public housing. Living many people with no choice but live in these squalid conditions for years on end. For those who live in these cage homes, the reality is starkly different from the glitz and glamours of Hong Kong's tourist attractions. This is the interior of a cage home tucked away in Sham Sho Po, one of the poorest yet most rapidly gentrifying regions in Hong Kong. With so many people living in close proximity to one another, the risk of infections and diseases spreading is extremely high. This is especially concerning given the past COVID-19 pandemic and potential future outbreaks. This situation is not only of a humanitarian crisis, but of a public health crisis. Poverty. Poverty. The poverty. 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 Poverty line. Poverty. Poverty. Soaring property prices. Poverty situation is quite uh, serious in Hong Kong. The percent of the population live below the poverty line. Welcome to Hong Kong. Hong Kong has one of the smallest living spaces in the world, with over 200,000 people living in subdivided cage and coffin homes. Do you think what's the percentage of the Hong Kong's population live under the poverty line? Just have a guess. Mm, maybe 50%? About 30%. I read about it before. Is, is it 20%? So it's around 1 in 5, which is around 20-ish percentage. That's still like... 1 million people under poverty, yeah. right? There's quite a lot of people actually. Quite a lot of people. Hong Kong's first official poverty line is defined in 2013 as defined as 50% of the median household income. Under these conditions, more than 1 million people in Hong Kong are considered as poor. Hence, the high Gini coefficient of Hong Kong. In order to quantify inequality and you know, be able to compare it, there is a number called the Gini coefficient, with zero being the most equal society and with one being the most income unequal society in the world. Hong Kong has a Gini coefficient of 0.54, which actually lies ninth in the world. Behind South Africa, Namibia, Suriname, Zambia, Central African Republic, Eswatini, Colombia and Mozambique. So what is the impact of poverty and low income on health? Today we have Dr. Fanning. Hi. Dr. Fanning is the, the founder of two NGOs and I found it really inspiring. I'm here with Joshua. A non-local uh, Hong Kong resident from Sub-Saharan mm. Africa, mm. <laughs> if I may say. Yep. Let's look at some indicators, shall we? Well, in fact, there's a correlation in Hong Kong between lower income and higher systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Social determinants of health indeed is uh, neglected by many health professions and also not being fully understood by many authorities who are um, doing their jobs in different kind of the public mm. service setting. And of course, for the general public. Lower income is also correlated to poor self-rated health. 
data show that of course there is a kind of the gradient difference. Better off family have enjoyed a better off health than those uh, underprivileged. This might be a reason from the fact that Hong Kong is such a money-driven and status-driven society. In addition, lower income in Hong Kong is also associated with less happiness and poor family harmony. One of the measures of social well-being have these pictures of these cage homes in Hong Kong, right? Whoa. Living in such cramped and unhygienic conditions can lead to the spread of diseases, particularly in COVID-19, where social isolation is impossible in these cage homes. It looks, um, for lack of a better word, a, a little bit inhumane. Because um, I, I came across one uh, of our last month, and uh, they have their washing machine, they have the washroom, they have their uh, kitchen, all within about 18 feet, and I think it's, it's not it's not um, appropriate for adequate human living, considering the mental, physical, and emotional health of every individual. Because the living spaces also add up to how healthy the person ends up at the end of the day. So I think it's not, it's, it's not the best. It's not in any way close to being the best. And I think it's, it's not humane. When we think about education, housing, our living environment, whether we can have a good job, um, our living environment in terms of is there good neighbours? Are we being connected with our community? Do we know what happened? And when we get into any trouble in the community, anyone are ready to help? Those kind of things are as important as, or in my views, is even more important than the healthcare setting. Living in such cramped conditions can lead to a variety of physical health problems. Many cage home residents suffer from chronic illnesses, but it can also lead to respiratory issues due to poor ventilation and air quality. But the impact of housing inequality goes beyond physical health. Living in such profound conditions can lead to an impact on mental health as well. One, the way how stuffy the room is, and two, the disconnect they have. I think most of them are just in single individual, these coffin homes. It's, it goes a long way to affect their mental health. You know, I mean, having this whole stuffed environment, and because I mean, science has proven that the the ambience in which you you would, you would, you you work or you exist also affects your mood, your psyche, your motivation for the day, and even your your self perspective. So I think it also affects their motivation for the job. It just affects their perspective about life, it affects their perspective about themselves. The constant stress of living in the cramped and crowded conditions with other tenants and livers who you might not get along with and have the same living habits can lead to depression, anxiety and other mental health related issues. The lack of privacy and personal space in these cage homes can have a sense of being trapped and unable to escape. Socially, the impact of inequality can be equally devastating. To what I call the hermit mentality. Emmett's mentality is a, um, all, always the isolated mentality. So it's, it's, it's difficult for them to develop people skills. Um, also, apart from the Hermit mentality, um, they have a self low, um, low self-esteem you know, because of the environment they live in. Because anytime they, they try to get amongst people, you know, that kind of um, background they are from, you know, the whole environment, the whole standard of living forms a weight of low self-esteem on them. These residents might receive discrimination and stigma from other people in society who view them as poor or undesirable. This can lead to further social isolation and a lack of opportunities for social interaction, as well as a sense of shame and low self-esteem. All these three components make up what we call health, defined by WHO. Wait, 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 but hold up, you may ask, what has been done to address this issue? The Hong Kong government has invested heavily in public housing. Make a guess of the waiting list of Hong Kong's public housing, which is called Gong Lok. About seven years. Yes, it's six to seven years. While public housing has attempted to alleviate the pressure on the housing market, the waiting time for one of these public housing units can be up to six to ten years or beyond, leaving many people with no choice but to live in these squalid conditions for years on end. It's important to shed light on this issue and find solutions to help improve 
there's people who live in these conditions. Only then can we truly appreciate the vibrancy of Hong Kong's people and culture. How did housing in Hong Kong become such a big problem in this Asia's financial hub? One of the main causes is the artificial supply constraint from the government. Well, in fact, all land in Hong Kong is owned by the government, and the government leases out these land to developers to develop private housing units for Hong Kong's residents. You may think, well, the size of Hong Kong is too small, right? There's not enough land to develop these housing. You're wrong, my dear. Of the 1,114 kilometers squared of Hong Kong's land area, only a total of 79 kilometers squared is zoned for residential purposes. And the total land area that has been developed for residential and commercial purposes only go up to 24%. So a whopping 75% of the land is not even developed in Hong Kong. Well, obviously some areas are zoned for green areas for country parks, and in fact some areas are mountainous and might not be easy zoned in. The deeper problem here is Hong Kong's free economical and low tax policy has driven the government into attaining income from leasing land, artificially restricting the supply of land use in Hong Kong. Low corporate and shopping tax policies might have led Hong Kong to this amazing city for running a business. It certainly has had an impact on the people who live in Hong Kong. Some might say Hong Kong's tax and economic policies actually benefit rich more than the poor and some may say the poor or or citizens in Hong Kong with lower socio-economic status are often are often neglected and the government does not know what to do with them so yes Hong Kong the government has the majority of income coming from leasing out its government owned land to these private developers for developing private housing one last thing I think the government is trying its best the government is doing what it can mm. but um, I just think it might take a while for we can't blame anybody, but I think it's a long-term thing, the problem that will be solved eventually, but it might take a, lot, a little bit of time, I think. Okay, so what is the average price to buy an apartment in Hong Kong? 10, 20 million to buy our average apartment. Okay. 1.2 million US dollars. Okay, so how long do I have to do an average to pay off the mortgage? Uh, around the... Uh, uh, 13 years. 30 years yeah. to pay 20, off the mortgage. 25 years to 13 years. Oh, uh, you might think, oh, 1.2 million I can get. A really fancy hillside looking at the beach sort of mansion. No! Hong Kong that only gets you an, an average 500 to 700 square feet apartment that looks like this. And how on earth do an average middle class or low class citizen in Hong Kong buy one of these apartments for 1.2 million US dollars? Well, they have to put down 50% down payment and pay it off for 20, 30, 40 years of their life. And this is the reality of living in Hong Kong. Whilst this amazing public transportation, large variety of food options, low corporate and shopping tax, its housing issue is still deep into our roots and has led Hong Kong to be one of the most expensive cities in the world and possibly the most unhappy city in the world too. We try to set up the NGO is uh, to raise the awareness of this kind of the phenomenon. To shift the focus uh, from to keep people health, uh, to make people healthy, is not only the responsibility of doctor. As Brian Wong outlined in his Times article, as he walked through the neon-lit claustrophobic corridor during COVID-19, he was reminded of two lines from Wilfred Owen's poem, Dolce et Decorum Est. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. 